Geopolitics is, is an Anglo-Saxon discipline. Like it was invented uh, in Britain by geographers in the 19th century as a discipline, I mean. So it's a very Anglo thing. So it's understandable that like most of the discourse on geopolitics is, uh, is in the English language. And it was directed against Russia mostly. So it's paradoxical that uh, probably the most literate people uh, geopolitically literate people are in Eastern Europe. Whoa. Whoa. It was invented by the as a way to, was it a way to slime Russia or like a way to convince Eastern Europeans to like ally against Russia? That sounds very uh, It's related. Like, okay, the, like the guy who's considered to be the father of geopolitics is a British geographer called uh, Halford Mackinder. Uh, which he's, he's like a very he was a very famous guy from the 19th century again and he's a, he belonged to the royal geographical society or whatever name he was in Victorian England then and this guy described the world in several areas mm -hmm. and he he found mm -hmm. that the the key to world power and this is, of course, in the, a time uh, where Britain was still a world power. Right. Uh, the key to hold world power was to control what he called the heartland, which is like a point in the middle of Eurasia. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was like the world island. That yeah, point. like the world island thing. So uh, it's at this time that uh, Britain is, you know, it has all its uh, Indian subcontinent mm -hmm. colonies, and it's contesting uh, the Russian advances in Afghanistan and in in Central Asia. Because but, this was like the Wild West, Central Asia. So in, in like kind of like, I guess like as that like evolves then, like what, when you think about that now, like especially from like the perspective of Spain, like what, what is like the, like, like when you're, does every country actually have a grand strategy? Like does no. like okay so like does Spain have a grand strategy right now? Do you think? I don't think it does. Okay. Like I I, I can't really talk much about Spain. Yeah. But uh, if I had to say if I had to say where Spain is aligned, I would say it's definitely uh, in the American side. Like as 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 most Western countries. Most, most Western countries follow the American foreign policy. Yep. Like they may have some uh, nuance and they may have some uh, discrepancies, but as a bloc, they don't really, you know, pursue their their own foreign policy. Usually, like, like what's the grand strategy of Spain? What the grand strategy of Maine is? It's like oh, sorry, sorry. What was that? Like, like asking, like kind of like what's the grand strategy of Spain? It's kind of like asking what the grand grand strategy of like Maine or like the North Carolina. Yeah, like, like everyone's a bit, yeah. Same entity. Yeah, like there is there is definitely some international interests, but it's nowhere near the the scope of what America has. Well, like if we think like like Italy as like another one, where it's kind of like. You, you, like I guess, like I look at like a Singapore, and like okay, yeah, like Singapore, and you have a country where um, almost nothing going, right? But they get like Julius Caesar level talent out of nowhere, and then he like Lee Kuan Yew comes in, he rips it out, and like all of a sudden it's a financial center. Like forty years later, okay. yeah. So like that's it just like a swamp. great man. Like it was a horrible swamp, Singapore before that. Yeah, it was like literally rice paddies. Yeah, there was and, like, nothing out there. What what do you think like if 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 someone like if you had like Lee Kuan Yew was mm -hmm. born in Italy and was like thirty five years old right now like what do you think would be like a like a a good highest aspiration? Well, like, I think the I'm not going to call it a problem, but the issue with uh, European countries, especially all European countries like Spain, Portugal, France, Italy, yeah. is that they're in a, in a way they are in a post geopolitical phase mm -hmm. because uh, when geopolitics was invented, those countries were already way past their peak. Mm -hmm. Like Spain's peak was uh, at, the, at the end of the 16th century as a world power. 
So world power politics were only formulated later. So all these uh, power plays by Spain were not explicit in the way British, uh, British policies were explicit in the 19th century. You know what I mean? I don't know if I... No, no, you are. You are. If, you know, geopolitics, it's a relatively new invention and that exactly. it's in Britain that before Britain created this kind of concept, that states were not explicitly thinking about yeah exactly to improve their standing in that way and okay so it was it was essentially unorganized yeah exactly because uh, Spain's Spain's conquest of the Americas yeah and the conquistadors they were just like uh, poor guys military veterans because uh, you know Spain at the like Spain in the 15th century. Yeah. had just uh, expelled the Moors from the Iberian Peninsula. And, and so they had like, a military that didn't Yeah, like they had, and it was overpopulated. Yeah. Like if you travel to, uh, through central Spain right now, it's empty. It's like, it has super low density. But at the same, at the time it was overpopulated. Huh. Okay, so there was uh, uh, a lot of, you know, unemployed, well, not unemployed because it was, it, 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 let's say jobless guys, military veterans usually, or people who, who had uh, low nobility ranks. Uh, so they didn't uh, want to work in the fields and they, because they were above that. So, so all this, all this, uh, you know, all these types that really didn't have anything to do in the Iberian Peninsula and uh, didn't have anything to lose by traveling to America. 